We're all familiar with robots. Well, that's not what I had in mind, but sure. Anyways, in this video, we're going to look into how your HR department might use bots to improve performance in the organization. Greg here from Streamline HR Solutions. In today's video, we're going to talk about how HR departments can leverage bots to improve efficiency in your organization. Now, if you're a little nervous about bots, you fail me yet again. Wow. And no, I'm not talking about the evil take over the world kind. And for the millennials, I'm not talking about the bad video game players. Wait, what? Oh, I don't even have bro. redeploy. Oh, I'm so stupid. Bro, you've been playing like a bot today, bro. bro. Ouch. That was harsh. Rather, I'm talking about software tools that simplify business processes and make things easier. Throughout my HR career, I got into Visual Basic for applications to build out macros in Excel and Access. Now, macros allow you to program several steps of a function that you are trying to execute. For example, I used to build out complex three-tab merit spreadsheets for almost 200 locations. After tweaking my previously designed code for an hour or two, I would activate the macro, then go to lunch. And when I returned, I had 200 perfectly formatted spreadsheets built out with no errors, perfectly named, and all the calculations worked great. This macro that I built saved me about two days of work every time I used it. Here's an example of a macro in action that I posted to YouTube back in 2012. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit the press for breakout. And you're going to see the spreadsheets breaking out and you'll see on the top right you'll see that it's creating these spreadsheets. Well, hell, times have changed. So a video quality. So are macros bots? Well, maybe only in the simplest sense. I would really say that a bot is an evolved version of macros. In an article by Kristen Masters at UiPath, she explains software robots as the next generation of macros. She says that while macros can perform functions automatically once they've been programmed, robots can respond to external stimuli and have their functions reprogrammed. So a macro is something that you have to initiate at the proper time. However, robots can respond to external feedback to decide when to execute macros appropriately. So now that we have a better understanding of what bots are, when might I use them in my HR department? I can share where I've used them when you have data feeding between systems and you want to ensure that both systems are updating correctly, you may develop a bot to audit data accuracy. Well, why might you use this? Let's say you want to validate 60 fields for 10, 20, or 30,000 employees, or even more. A bot can save you weeks of productivity. I know, Twiggy. Exciting, right? Well, this type of bot would be useful for any role that has major system or financial impact concerns for which needs to be regularly audited. You might also consider using bots for automating the recruiting process, verifying employment, or a myriad of other tasks, for example. These types of tasks are either implemented to free up time for colleagues to concentrate on other things, or maybe even to reduce headcount. Now, the more exciting bots that may interact with all your employees may actually be right under your nose, and you don't even know it. If your organization uses Workday, there's a chatbot functionality that will make employees' engagement with the system far simpler than it used to be. Instead of the user having to type in specific commands or follow a defined menu path to get to an action, say to request time off, move employees, or find employee data, they can now have a typed conversation with Workday in natural language to do these things. Let's take a quick look at this functionality. So imagine you're cat and mouse. You log into Workday and you want to understand how to find out information. Can you take a day off? Where do you find people in the organization? Let's go ahead and take a look. So let's say you're cat and mouse and you log into Workday and you need help doing some basic functions. Where can you do that? Well, this is where bots come into play. Workday has the capability of leveraging the basic functionality of the program and simplifying it into a text format. So for example, in Workday, there is a, something called the Workday Assistant, also known as a chatbot. All I have to do is click on the button, and then it will ask me what I want. And I can basically say in common language. So let's say you're cat and mouse, an employee at this company. 
you want to request time off, but you don't know how to work the time off request in Workday. Well, bots make it easy. All you would have to do is click on the symbol below and you can request time off. When I request time off, it'll ask me for a date. I'm going to go ahead and ask off for 9-11-2020. And then it's going to give me the options that I can use in this particular case. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to say travel pay in this particular situation. And then I'm going to hit submit. It's as easy as that. I've requested time off and I've used Workday without even really knowing it. So pretty impressive. Now let's say you want to do more. Maybe I want to find employee. I type, I type in find employee and it says I just need a name. Oh that's easy. There's an employee that I've been trying to figure out where he works. His name is Dog and Cat. He reports to Greg Laney and it was a piece of cake. All I have to do at that point is click on his name and the information will pop up for him. Bots are just as easy as that. You can also do other functionality such as view options. So let's say I want to see what I can do and I want more information. Oh, I just type help. Notice everything I'm typing, even if it's not a right command, is in normal syntax. So here, this tells me what I can do. I can ask about paychecks, time off balance, what can you do? Oh, okay. What can you do? I can find a coworker's information, feedback, request or view a W-4. I can view dependents. I can look at my insurance and pay information as well. Oh, and there's more you can do. Oh, fantastic. I can view time off balances as well and insurance policies and a holiday schedule. Oh, I'd like to see what the holiday schedule is. So I go in here view holiday schedule. And you'll notice I don't have to be an expert in Workday. All I have to do is understand how to type very basic information that the Workday Assistant prompts me with. There's my information. Oh, holiday schedule for 2020, holiday schedule for 2021. Looks like I found what I need. So in this situation, cat and mouse is off to a great start, understanding how to use the chat box. Chat box is made Catton's life much easier, and he's at the head of the game, all thanks to Workday's assistant. Now, if your company uses another human capital management or HMS system, they may also have chatbot capability. I'm not as familiar with those other options, but have your HRIS team look into it. I can say that if you have Workday, you should seriously be turning this functionality on. Now, there are a couple of design considerations that may have prevented your organization from turning on this free functionality. However, you need to have your HIS team constantly revisit the service option for activation. There are other areas that I didn't even get into during this video. Chatbots for open enrollment, case management, and other areas. Face it, chatbots aren't just the future. They are a reality now. If you've got an experience using chatbots for HR functions, please share your experience in the comments below. Also, I'd love to know any HR technology topics that interest you. I'd love to make a video on it. Don't forget, if you like the video, give it a like below and share it with anyone you think would benefit from learning about bot application in HR. For continued videos, hit the subscribe button and you'll have visibility to all new videos produced. Until next time, take care.